So today I'm going to show you how to run magic on your unpatched switch. Now this will not work on every single switch. This will not work on a switch light, uh, the newer V2 models and the LED model. However, this will work on the older generation, mainly the ones that came out during launch. Now to check to see whether or not your switch is capable of running magic, you're going to go to this website here. It's called ismyswitchpatch.com. I'll leave a link for it down below. And you could go ahead and check that out by looking to the left of your charging port. It's going to have a barcode with three numbers, uh, three letters, and then a few numbers. So you're going to find your prefix, which is the three letters followed by the first number. And then you're going to type in the first six numbers after that. So mine happens to be 005520. And then you're going to get a notification whether or not your console is patched or unpatched. And if it says hooray uh, shows green, then you could go ahead with this. If it shows yellow, then it's maybe patched and there's a high possibility that this will not work. You can continue on to see if it will. And if it's red, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Your console is patched. It will never run magic. All right. So with that out of the way, you now know that your switch is capable of running magic. There are a few things that you have to go ahead and get uh, type C cable from your switch to your PC is needed. You also need a micro SD card. I'm running a 16 gigabyte uh, card. But I really don't do too much. If you want to go ahead and um, download games or do whatever, then you are going to want to make sure that you go ahead and get a bigger SD card. 64 gigabytes is what I recommend. Any more than that is always better. You also need something called an RCM jig. This is going to allow you to boot into RCM mode, which is known as recovery mode. Go ahead and completely power off your switch and go to this website here. This is sdsetup.com. Now, a lot of people don't like this, but this is the simplest and easiest way to go about uh, placing the files on your switch. This, uh, this website just automatically updates itself. Once you go there, just click on the Nintendo switch icon. I recommend just going for minimum. Make sure that Atmosphere Hikate is selected. You're going to scroll down a little and make sure that Homebrew menu is selected as well. Now, if this is your first time, you may want to go ahead and use the Homebrew App Store. I won't be using that. And then there's also a few other things as well, like emulators, RetroArch, PSP, uh, GBA, NES, and things like that. If this is your first time and you just want to get it installed and set up, then you may not need any of this. You can always go ahead and play around with this later on down for extras we are going to want hikate and tegra rcm gui once you've got that and anything else that you may want go ahead and download your zip now once the zip file is downloaded and done you're going to want to go ahead and take your sd card you're going to power off your switch completely put the sd card into the switch power on and you may be prompted for an update if you've never used a sd card on your switch that update will pop up just go ahead and do that it's a quick simple update that just allows the switch to use the sd card once that's done, it's going to repower on. Just turn it off completely again, pop out your SD card and put it into your computer. Your SD card should pop up. Now, if you were using an SD card before this, you will have a Nintendo folder just like this. This Nintendo folder has all your game captures, your saves, things like that. So make sure don't go ahead and do not delete that. Or you could go and make a backup, format your SD card if you want to but just leave it as is, that's perfectly fine. Now take that .zip file that you downloaded, bring it to your desktop and just extract or unzip it, and then take that and move it over here. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And inside here, everything's gonna be labeled uh, individually. So payload, PC, SD. You're gonna have your SD card here and within the downloaded folder that you have, open up SD, take everything that's in here and drag it and drop it to the root of your SD card. Once that's done, your SD card is pretty much done and set up. So now we can go ahead and take that out and put it back into our switch. Now, once your SD card is back into your switch, you're going to go ahead and take that RCM jig. You're going to take off the right Joy-Con and put the RCM jig in the rail. Make sure it's all the way down. And then you're going to hold the volume up and press power once. Nothing should pop up on the screen. And if that happens, that's perfectly fine. That means you are in RCM mode. However, if your switch does turn on, just go ahead and power it back off. Make sure that RCM jig is all the way down and try again. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and plug your switch into your PC and then back onto the PC. We're going to go ahead and open up the SD, uh, the SD setup folder, go to PC, Tegra RCM, and then the RCM GUI.exe. This is going to open up a program like this. And if it says RCM, okay, then you're good to go. However, if that does not pop up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go to settings and install driver. Install that, and if it doesn't pop up yet again, just make sure that you are in RCM mode. If you are 100% sure that you are, then go ahead and double check your USB-C cable. 
Maybe your USB-C cable is no good. Maybe it's not transferring data. Whatever the uh, case may be, just try a different one and uh, see if that helps out. But once you have the RCM OK symbol, you're going to go ahead and press this folder find button and you're going to go to where your SD, uh, your SD setup folder is. Open that up, go to payloads and then Hecate. You should have that there and then just press inject payload. On your switch, you should have Hecate pop up just like that. And on your PC screen, you should have a green check mark. Now go back to your switch. It may ask you to set up a date and time. Just go ahead and press done or cancel. And then you could go and unplug your switch, take out the RCM jig and put your joy cons back on. Now, once you're here, you're pretty much done, but there are a few extra steps that you can take if you just want to be a little bit more secure or just a, a little bit more backed up just in case you have to break your switch or things like that. You can back up your system then. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that here because that is a long process, but I'll leave a link in the description down below. that will show you how to do that if you want to go ahead and do so. You can also do something like an EMU MMC, which is going to be a complete copy of your system onto the SD card. And that's going to be just in case you want to do some shady stuff on the side or you just want to be completely secure and make sure that you don't get your system banned. However, I'm not going to be able to show any of that. So if you would like to learn how to do that, I'll leave a link for those in the description down below, just in case you want to go with those steps. Now, once you're here, you could just go ahead, press launch and then CFW Sysnam. Now, just keep in mind that you do not want to turn off your Nintendo Switch. If you do that and it's completely powered off, you have to go back into RCM mode and inject that payload again in order to get back into custom firmware. However, you can go ahead and put it asleep if you want to by just pressing the power button or putting it in the dock. But if you completely power off or if the battery dies completely, you are going to have to go through that process once again. And once your system boots up, it's just as easy as going into the home screen and then click it on album to get into the homebrew menu. Now, if you just want to go into the album normally, you're going to click on the right bumper here, click on album, and then it should up, uh, open up normally. But if you want to go into homebrew, just open up album and then everything you download, it should be there. Any emulators, uh, save data editors, uh, the homebrew store should be there if you downloaded that. But as I showed you with SD setup, I really didn't download anything. So mine is blank as of right now. So now you could go ahead and look into different type of things that you could do. There's things like uh, FTPD setup, which will allow you to transfer files from the computer to your switch without having to take out the SD card. There's also a uh, sys DVR, which is going to allow you to run games from your switch onto your computer wirelessly. So you can actually view that on your PC. There's uh, JKSV, which allows you to edit save data on your games. Uh, many different things, RetroArch, which will allow you to run emulators, all those different type of things are easy to place onto your switch uh i'll leave a couple links in the description down below if you want to check those out but that's pretty much it you now have custom firmware magic running on your unpatched switch if you happen to have any questions i highly recommend you go ahead and check out my discord the link in the description down below great community which are always available to help you guys if you happen to have any questions um ultimately you can also find me over on twitch i'll leave a link for that as well you can ask me personally any questions that you may have and I'll answer them on stream when I'm live. But that's pretty much it. If this helped you out, please go ahead and drop a like. I appreciate it a lot. You can also subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you on the next. Peace.